So if you've seen any of the videos from uh, Blackpool, from the, uh, the show, the many of the next team were there, um, managing to scavenge a look at Kev's uh, a demo for his uh, ice wall project. Um, the, you may have also seen Jim mention the, he had a next KS2 uh, board in the machine which had only arrived the day before. Well, it's arrived at one of the other um, uh, worldwide uh, testing sites for the, uh, for the board. Um, and one of the things we wanted to check first was that the tape loading was uh, was good and works at a much lower volume. Um, so we tried a few different cassettes, and uh, I was looking to think through some of the ones to, for a blank to do a save. Um, for those who watch the channel, you know I've got quite a lot of attics in Wizards Towers, um, and there was a significant number of, uh, of bags of tapes have come out of them, and uh, I've been working through them slowly over the, the years. Um, and I, by attics, I mean a lot of attics. Um, so quite a few bags full of tapes. And uh, well, the next saves a tape from a long time ago. Let's see what what happened, shall we? Anyway, I got a, a large bag of cassettes which I pulled one out of, uh, which says tracks on it. And a red sticker. That looks a bit strange, doesn't it? Um, and the tape itself has got some cellar tape over so it's been a reused one. Tracks! Exclamation mark. Hmm. The tape itself is quite interesting. Volume 13, 3 Winthrop Laboratory. Seems to be some sort of medical tape. So, uh, yeah. Fascinating, I thought. So, anyway, I was just looking for old tapes just to try the uh, the next board and see what would you know, make sure loading was uh, pretty good, even with all sorts of all those random tapes. And I thought I'd take a look what was on this one. Sound of the tape loading as well. So we're going to more. And we use the tape loader and we do start and play, press play on the tape. Um, I'm going to do this in 48k mode 4. So hopefully now the uh, tape will. It's going through the leader. Here comes the classic sound. It's a bit wobbly because it's old, but program track, so that's definitely what it says on the tape. There we go. So that's definitely what's on that tape. So 1983 Paul Clancy interesting I wonder where we got that tape from maybe sent to us as a uh, to think about publishing it press the space bar and here's the instructions so you've got to uh, get through the tunnel from the right if you enter from the left you'll be derailed Poison a killer train and pick up the passengers. So three locos, one more for every two thousand scored. Each passenger gives ten points, and then when you're all on, all on the train, pass through the arch to make more appear. So I assume that means from the right, not the left, of derail you. So one and three to turn. So one to turn to the train's left and three to turn to the right. Oh dear, that's gonna be like playing three D isometric games, isn't it? Um, so, if no keys pressed, train will try to go straight. So, the bottom line will show your score. Locate is in the shed and the session's highest score. Excellent. Well, let's press any key to start the game, shall we? Actually, when you press a key, it just loads the next part of the game. So, uh, maybe first we'll have a little bit of research about tracks. Um, what's known about it? What is it? So this is what I found. Um, there is a listing for tracks without the exclamation mark from Soft Joe Software. Uh, missing in action according to Spectrum Computing. 
arcade game action. It's got a little bit about the uh, different magazines it appears in as well. So it's obviously advertising on Computer Weekly. Um, now, World of Spectrum also has the same thing. Soft Joe Software, Missing in Action. So it looks like we have found a, a missing game. Um, uh, Paul Clancy is uh, credited from a couple of other games. Alien, uh, The Force and Twists. Now, I don't know whether it's the same guy. I suspect it might well be, but 364 has got an interview with a Paul Clancy making the arcade hit Cosmic Cruiser. Now, that came out for the Spectrum and the C64. And um, I did find a reference to tracks on the C64. It's actually available as a file. So, um, and it's credited to Paul Clancy. So I'm pretty certain try and get hold of him maybe and see if it is this one. But uh, interesting. So the uh, the advert from uh, Home Computing Weekly, this one, which is uh, here, it is uh, June twenty first of June, nineteen eighty three, on page forty four. So it's Soft Joe's superb new game for Spectrum and Commodore sixty four. So it's listed both tracks, machine code, Soft Joe's Business Centre in Birkenhead, Merseyside. Um, it's actually mentioned as well as uh, from the special report from when they went uh, Home Computer Show went to. Um, the Earl's Court Computer Fair um, and there is brief mention then on uh, this one I think uh, did find it here somewhere uh, yeah computer will never be the same after tracks a new game at 550 complete with sound train checks around the screen collecting passion and trying to avoid the killer train a VIC-20 version is due out in about a fortnight that's interesting so no mention of a VIC-20 one anywhere but uh, the C64 one is definitely available for download and um, Sinclair uh, User here, magazine, um, gives uh, a bit of a coverage of it. This is September 1983. Um, so Pac-Man gets uh, on right track for a novel game. So they quite like it. Track's original entertaining game. Should be popular with children of all ages. Um, package cost 5 50 they thought was expensive. Um, 4 95 was fairly common. So uh, there we go. So uh, that looks like that. That's what the game is. So now what we're going to need to do is um, I have taken a snapshot onto the next board. Um, what we do is take a little look at how you do that maybe. Um, one thing we're going to have to look at doing is making a TZX of the tape. I uh, don't think we'll, uh, we'll need some of the stuff that came after it. But, uh, so let's take a, um, a proper preservation copy of the tape. Uh, unfortunately we don't have what the, what the cover would look like. Um, maybe we can find one for the Commodore 64 and, uh, and have a little look at that. Before I go hunting for a cover, uh, maybe you'd like to actually see what the game looks like. So uh, let's uh, load the second half of the tape and take a look. Ooh, that's a mistake. Break, continue, repeat. Oh dear, why did I do that? Uh, don't press space. Don't press any key. <laughs> Definitely don't press space. <laughs> um, so we should be able to just go to... Right, okay. I won't talk much of this because I expect we'll just see a, a 10 times speed for the load. <laughs> oh, I like the Chef Chef noise. That was recorded on the tape, I think. Okay, press S to start. So there goes the train zooming round. If I go three here and go left, I go one there, I should be able to go that way. It means I pass that guy. And then up, I can pass those guys. Oop, went the wrong way. 
Do we have got to avoid that guy over there? Oh, oh head on crash. Oh dear. There we go. Off we go again. Just have an interest in going to derail myself. Oh, no. oh well, there we go. <laughs> I'm sure we can have quite a bit of fun with this game. <laughs> 